Church. It's Monday morning and we want to look at again the Word of God as we go to chapter number seven and see the results of God calling out the 144,000. Remember during this great time of tribulation, the saints are gone to heaven. We've been raptured and God then calls out 144,000 Jewish men as well as two witnesses and they begin to go through the earth and, and share the gospel and many people are saved. And those that are saved, however, a lot of those come underneath persecution. We've already looked at that in the fifth seal. And many become martyrs and many die in that. But I want you to notice that it's not just going to be Jewish people that are going to be saved, but it's going to be people from all over the earth. These Jewish witnesses will go to every language group, every people group. And God will be so gracious that during that time of tribulation, when things are so helpless and hopeless and dark, that the light of the gospel will go forth and many people will be saved. These will be our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, look at chapter uh, 7, verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a, with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne of the elders and the four living creatures and fell on the face before the throne, worshiping God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Then one of the elders said to me, Who is, are these in the white robes and where did they come from? And he said, Sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him uh, day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. And they shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. And the sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now remember chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Revelation, we are already raptured and we have this euphoric experience of worshiping the Lamb around the throne, and we're there with Jesus, and uh, we're uh, casting our crowns before him and we're celebrating and we're singing songs of praise to God for what he's done. And we are the bride of Christ and that's the church that has been raptured into heaven. But here now we have saints that are coming on to heaven. Many of those were saved, all of those were saved in the time of the great tribulation. And, and many of those have already died because of martyrdom. They're coming to faith in Jesus Christ, but the Antichrist and his, his uh, henchmen are, are slaughtering the Jewish people who have come to faith. He's slaughtering the Christians. He, he's slaughtering everyone that has named the name of Jesus. And it's a wonderful thing to know that there's going to be so many, 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 many that no one can count that are going to be saved out of that time. And when they come before the throne and uh, they have died, then they receive their white uh, robes and they sing praises. And they give thanks to God for many things, but notice in, in verse number 10, two things. Number one, they thank God for their salvation because they were saved at that almost impossible time in, out of the most darkest times upon the earth. And God called them to salvation and God was gracious to them. But notice also to him who sits on the throne. Uh, they were excited uh, that they had one who represents them and who is both God and human who sits on the throne and is going to take over the throne of earth. You see, once the world gets a taste of the Antichrist and they see what's going on in the world, they too will, will recognize how wonderful it is to have a benevolent dictator like Jesus, one who controls all things, one who is righteous and uh, allows only justice to pour forth, to sit upon the throne and to bring about peace on the earth. Now at this time, what we're reading about, it's in heaven, but they recognize that he's going to sit on the throne on the earth as well. You know, the Bible teaches us that even in our prayers today, you and I ought to pray 
that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at what's going on in our world. Look at our own government. Look at the corruption. Look at the chaos. Just amp that up a hundred times and you're going to have the tribulation period. A time of evil, a time of desperation and darkness. It's just going to be literally hell on earth almost. And so during that time, uh, it would be wonderful to have Christ come and to take over the throne and establish order and justice upon the earth. And he will one of these days. And guess what? We get to rule and to reign with him. So let's make sure we're on the winning team here. We need to be with Jesus. If you don't have a relationship with him, then receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Turn from your sin and selfishness. Embrace Jesus as Lord. Let us pray. Father, again, we recognize that the times soon to come upon this earth are going to be very difficult days. And yet at the same time, Father, many are going to come to faith. They're going to find help. They're going to find hope in Jesus Christ. And again, help us right now when there's so many people right now desperate to find out some stability, uh, looking for some kind of place they can put their anchor. Uh, they can sink down to bedrock. I pray, Father, that you'll help us to deliver Christ to them. Help them to know that he is the solid rock upon, upon which they can build their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.